You're if you not stop allowed recording, to record I could give This is public property, ma'am. This is not public property. This is state property. What's the difference? You're not supposed to be video and take pictures of nothing. Are you take? Are you video? And what are you doing? I'm an independent journalist. I don't care. You, uh, do you got permission to be on the property? I, I don't. I don't care that you don't care. All right. So I'm gonna go in there and tell security that you're out here taking pictures. Please leave this area. New York State Police will be called if you refuse to leave the area. If someone's breaking the law, they should be held accountable, just like anybody else. Is that really what's going on now in this country? But that's the problem. That is a problem. You're absolutely right. Hey, what's up, guys? Long Island Audit here, back again with another video. Today, we're at the Green Haven Correctional Facility here in Stormfield, New York. We are here today, as always, to peacefully exercise our First Amendment right to film in public and publicly accessible areas to promote transparency and accountability within our government and to ensure that our public servants recognize our rights and treat us with respect. Let's get into it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look around the facility here in the publicly accessible areas. Who are you? I'm the plant superintendent. You're who? I'm the plant superintendent. What are you doing? Plant superintendent? Yeah, what are you doing? And your name? Dale Rabidou. Dale Rabidou. Nice what to meet you, Dale. You you're not supposed to be you're not supposed to be video and taking pictures of nothing. Are you take are you video? Why can't I take video? You're on state property. You're not supposed to. Who are you? State property is public property, right? No, it's not. Who it's are you? Not? Who's it funded by? Who owns it? Who are you? Why are you taking pictures? My name is Sean Dale. Okay, and what are you doing? I'm an independent journalist. I don't care. You, uh, do you got permission to be on the property? I, I don't. I don't care that you don't care. All right. So I'm gonna go in there and tell security that you're out here taking pictures. And you're the superintendent of what, Dale? I'm the plant superintendent. Plant. What does that mean? Plant superintendent. I oversee all the maintenance. Okay, you oversee maintenance. Yes. So you're a maintenance supervisor. I am. Okay. So you're not supposed to be doing that. So. I'm Why can't I take pictures in public? You're on state property. But who, what does state property have to do with anything? Property means it's private. You, you're not allowed to come here and take pictures. It's a prison. You, so you take a prison and pictures of a prison. You're not allowed to do that. But why would that What's be? Your name? Sean what? My name's Sean, sir. Sean what? Just Sean. From where? Just Sean, sir. All right, you stay right here. Stay right here. Isn't there visiting hours here, sir? This isn't a restricted area, is it? You're not supposed to take pictures of the property. But this isn't restricted, right? It is. Property. It's private property. You're not supposed to be taking pictures. If it's property. if it's private property, Dale, who owns it? Listen, you stay right here. I'll, you stay right here. Well, I wanted to go inside to the lobby. Huh? I'm gonna go tell security you're out here taking pictures. Oh, that's fine. You can go ahead and do that, Dale. So there goes the unconstitutional sign and policy Dale's referring to. Photographs are not to be taken on these premises without permission of the superintendent. Hi, ma'am. How are you? Hi, ma'am. How are you? Can you please stop recording, sir? Well, why would I need to stop recording, ma'am? Can I know who you are? You're just not allowed to record on the, on the, on the state premises. But why would that be? No worry about it. Don't worry about it, sir. Hi, sir. How are you? How are you? What, what agency are you with? Hi. How are you guys? Where can I get a visiting schedule and submit a FOIA request? Can I get that in here? Sir, you're if not you allowed to record here. Give whatever you need, sir. But what does recording have to do with me getting services here? I'm just here to I'm you're here to get a visiting schedule and conduct business here. On, but I'm here to state, conduct business. Not on a state property. But this is public property, ma'am. This is not public property. This is state, state property. property. What's the difference? I'm not, the day, sir. No, I, I'm you're not trying not, to argue you're with not you. To record here. But can you explain to me the difference between state You're and public not property? To record here, sir. Well, why would that be? I'm just trying to get some a visiting schedule. Where? Right here. I'm trying to get our names and stuff, though. Yeah, I just want to know who identifies you. Yeah, you're not allowed to record here, sir. 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 You're not I'm just conducting business here in the publicly accessible areas. I don't want to go into any restricted areas. This is not a restricted area, right? Of course not. Of course not. Okay. Just want to make sure. So you said the sergeant is coming down, sir? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. The sergeant has something else to 
So do you have like a visitor schedule or anything you can give me as far as that? I do. Once you turn off your recorder, we can speak to you regarding your But what would that matter? You're just, not allowed to record I'm just recording for transparency and accountability purposes. That's all. No nefarious purposes here. Oh, hey Sarge, how are you? Good and you? I'm doing well. Uh, give me one second, I'll be right out to talk to you. Alright, no problem. You don't mind if I just get your name, Sarge? Sarge Escalera. Thank you. Hey, how you doing? Hey, how are you? How's it going? What's your name? My name's Sean. Your name, sir? Uh, it's Lieutenant Bucalo. How are you? Lieutenant Bucalo? Yeah. Uh, and your name, sir? With, with the camera? Your name, sir? Officer Wepper. Officer Wepper? Alright, so, uh, any reason why you're doing this? I'm an independent journalist. I'm just gathering content for a story that oh. I'm working on. What's the story? My story's on the Greenhaven Correctional Facility here. I don't know how great it is. No. Oh, no. We'll see. We'll see. What? That, that's that's to be determined. Oh, on what? what if... All right, I got to <laughs> read this to you, all right? All right, no problem, Lieutenant. Just, you I got to ask you, you please leave this area. New York State Police will be called if you refuse to leave the area. Videotaping and photography. Uh, docks facility property without the consent of the superintendent or commissioner is prohibited by docks policy. Do you understand that? Policy, not law, yeah. right? While while members of the public who are visiting inmates are permitted to enter this lot and park their vehicles, this property is owned by the department of uh, and is considered part of a correctional facility and falls under the authority and jurisdiction of the commissioner. Pursuant to correction law section 112, he is empowered to exercise superintendent's management and control over, over all depart, department correctional facilities and for safety and security reasons. He has promulgated the restriction against the videotaping and photographing of docks facility property by any person while present on a correctional facility parking lot. If you would like to request permission to take photos or video of the facilities, you may contact the superintendent or commissioner. This property, while publicly owned, is a non-public forum, which is not traditionally recognized or designated as a forum for public assembly and is thus restricted. Your activity here is considered a security risk and it's present. You understand that? So where's the law there? Well, the law you said policy, is, right? Well, correction law, section 112, he has the power to, to tell you to leave. So, uh, I guess you're refusing, huh? Well, the whole the whole reason that so why are you I filming can't, this again? I'm an independent journalist. I'm exercising my First Amendment right to gather content for a story here. Okay, what's on, the story? It's on the Greenhaven Correctional Facility. Well, what's it about? Well, oh, I can't I can't divulge the specifics of the story until it's published. We can't get the scoop. Not until it's published. You'll get it when it's published. I promise. But again, I'm not in a. This is not a restricted area, is it? Well, it's it open to the public. Uh, I saw a sign that says this. This area is open to the public. Yeah, but you understood what I just read you, right? I understood you that, you, that you were telling me. Be, you know that, right? I don't know. Maybe he's, uh, I don't know why All he's right, trying so to attack you. how long are you going to be doing this for? So for I'm just taking police? some pictures and video. Yeah, I mean, if you want to call state police, I'll wait for them here and see if they, because you're not law enforcement, are you, Lieutenant? Uh, I am. I'm a peace officer. You're not I law can, enforcement, I, though. Uh, yes, we are. We can affect an arrest. We carry weapons off duty, carry handcuffs off duty. We are peace officers. But your your jurisdiction's inside of the. Oh no, you know if I see you outside in the store robbing something, I could arrest you. You do know that, right? As a peace officer. Yes. Okay. You didn't know that, did you? No, I didn't know that actually. Yeah. I thought I you thought you were. The, the yeah, I'll look law. into it. We That's interesting. Peace officers. That's interesting. Yeah, it's not just here. That's interesting. So. All right. I should give you guys a raise then. You don't make enough. You're absolutely right. <laughs> We've been trying to fight. <laughs> So, like I said, if you would like to call law enforcement, I would. Well, I think they did that already. Okay, cool. I would like. I would wait for them, and even just to yeah, you know. Why be... would you want to wait for them? Because I want to see if they honor their oath. Do you want to antagonize us? That's no, not I'm not trying to antagonize. I'm, I'm just, here for you. What, what if? What if? What have I said or done that's antagonizing uh, you, Lieutenant? Nothing. Yeah. So let's not let's not escalate it and let, let's oh, not. I'm not gonna escalate. Oh, it. I don't that's think you are. You. No, I I don't think you are, Lieutenant. I'm just saying, but by saying like. You know what you think my intentions might be in this in in this uh, certain scenario. You, you're you're assuming things that aren't true. I I'm not. A lot of things. Yeah. You know what they say. Yeah. When you assume, yeah, right? Most of the time, I'm right. That's <laughs> so right. yeah, like I said, I just I'm not here to uh, escalate any situation or agitate, as you just said, or you know do anything of that nature. I'm here to peacefully exercise my rights, and I understand the policy you just right, read but me. How long do you have to do this for? 
Like how well, I would like to see. Oh, I just need to. I need standing. So in order to the way it works with tenant is in order for me to ch challenge that policy in a court of law, I need standing. I need to be harmed by that policy. And if law enforcement comes and says, "Hey, listen, we're going to arrest you if you don't leave the premises and stop recording," then well, I have the, what? What's the purpose of it? So that way, now I have standing. Now my constitutional rights well, have been violated. No, but now that my now my constitutional. You're not understanding the whole premise I of do. it. I understand. So now my now my rights have been violated, and I can bring it to a court, and we can a court can decide whether that policy is constitutional or unconstitutional. And th I think that's the right way to do it, other than you know me trying to agitate you or you trying to agitate me, and we escalate the situation, and it gets out of control. You, you do understand by doing this, it, you film it and then you leave. Why do you have to stay till the end? Well, no, I you're not under, you you're not to hearing. Go to court with it. Yes, that's what you're. You're not. Under, I need. To, and, I need to be in a court. The purpose of that. To see say if it, you win. Now, if a judge, okay. Now, here's the say purpose. The judge, the judge says, because I, I just won in, in federal court in New York City. I just got the NYPD. They had a policy just like this one, and the judge told them to take down all their signs. I could show you it if you'd like. But, so that's what I said. I affect change. So now the NYPD cannot enforce their policy anymore. So that's what I'm trying. That's my goal here is to say, hey, listen, so you I've been. be able to go inside and film. Not necessarily. Well, anything, anywhere that's public, anywhere that's public, that's publicly accessible, that anybody else. If I was out here without a camera, you wouldn't be out here talking to me, would you? I'm not. Right. If I was just out here so walking if around. They made this private. Then you but can't they know. wouldn't. Well, how do you know? I mean, because I, if you if it was a restricted area, then I wouldn't. But if I was walking around here, Lieutenant, without the camera, and right, I just so walked they around made this private, and I sat on that bench all day, you wouldn't care, right? Well, eventually someone's gonna ask you what you're doing here. Yeah, and I'm sitting singing on the bench, and no one's gonna care, right? No, they will. They would care. Eventually, why are you sitting here for this long? You need help? You need something? Okay. Get you a ride? We'll but get there's... you a ride? <laughs> Call the police on you again? Yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully we're not. Hopefully not. I don't. I don't. I don't want to. I, I see I see your point, but I, I hope you see my point is that, like I said, this is not something where yeah you said I'm gonna I'm just gonna end up leaving. Okay, that's fine. But I leave with cause to enter into a federal court, right. just like I did in New York court. City, and New York City, a, a federal judge in okay, New York we'll City. Say you win. Yeah. Then well, we, then, then, we then you could record. Down, right? Yeah, you like take New the York, signs down, like New York City. One. And that's a win for the people, for transparency and accountability. But the people don't care. A lot of people care. You'd be surprised. I'll send you the video, and you could look at the comment section of the video, oh, okay. and you could see how many people care. About you filming? In public and exercising my rights, because it's important to, if you, our prison. rights, our rights are like muscles. It's public. Our rights are like muscles. If you don't use them, you'll lose them. So it's, it's. It's not necessarily about filming here at the correctional facility. It's about filming anywhere that the government, that there's okay. government property and it's open to the public. You're right. Kind of like Washington, D.C. Right. I would love to do that. I'm, hey, don't worry. I'll make, my, I'll make my way over there soon. <laughs> don't worry. Well, you're just a little closer to me. That's all. All right. I'm from Long Island, so you're a little closer to me. But Can I'll eventually get there. The state police. Can we find out if you call the state police yet? Did you guys get the superintendent's permission to film? Of course we did. You did? It's in the memo. He gave you permission to film? Of course he did. That's why we're out here. Okay. Why, well, you don't like being filmed? No, I have no problem being filmed. I'm filmed all the time. I'm just glad I did we, my hair today. So. <laughs> you know, we, we're, we're filmed all the time, right? Right, Lieutenant? When you walk into any government building, you're being filmed. You know, the government's well, always watching not. us, right? That's not. There's cameras everywhere now. Everywhere. Everywhere. What's one more? No, we got one out here too. Right. So what's one more? What's one more? You say I was in the well, memo. You said I was a security risk. I don't understand what what could be a security risk. You know that anything I could film out here, I can get from Google. Yes, I do. So what's the security risk? I don't understand. You could be filming a bunch of stuff. If I tell you what the security risk is, then everybody knows. Fair enough. I don't. I don't see the security. I, like you just said, everybody can get this right. information I mean, from there's Google. There's a lot of stuff the public doesn't know what the government does. That's the problem. It's good or bad. That's the problem. They, they don't, people don't need to know everything the government government does. You know that. I disagree. You do you need to know that our military is doing special op operations? I'm not. I'm not filming special operations. No, so. but I'm saying you're saying the government needs to tell us everything. Man, they really don't. But to protect us, they should be more. Yeah. That's why they you know if you give up, everything. you know there's a, there's a quote by Benjamin Franklin that says um, to the effect of those who give up their liberty their liberty for the illusion of security deserve neither. Okay, what's your stance on uh, Second Amendment with the guns? 
I believe every open carry for everywhere, constitutional okay. carry. Don't I think we can agree there, right? Yeah, we do. Oh, so what's the difference? So because I have a camera, Listen, you're, you're, we're disagreeing here. No, I get it. I get you doing your job. But uh, what I'm saying is a camera, I agree we should be able to open carry everywhere, constitutional carry throughout this whole great country of ours. It probably it's, reduce the crime rate. Right, I guarantee it would reduce the crime rate. I guarantee it would. Yeah. Because the next time somebody goes to commit a crime, they're going to be like, wait a minute, everybody in the store might... Shoot me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> But there's a reason why they're restricting that, our Second Amendment. There's a reason why they're restricting our First Amendment. There's reasons for these things. And these things that need to be brought, the only way we could do it, I can't fight you on it. I can't, you know, you, like you said, you're just doing it. The only way you could do it is do court. I understand. So you have no problem with me waiting until law enforcement gets here, right? And seeing what they say? No, I'm just asking you to leave politely and you do do not want to correct well i want to wait for law enforcement to see what they say i'll explain that to you i mean the state police come but i mean they could tell you everybody else I appreciate you guys being cordial with me and, and, you know, identifying yourselves and, you know, things sometimes don't always go this way and it's unfortunate. <laughs> it's very unfortunate. Yeah, well, we got to believe in our constitutional rights, right? You got to. Why, no, why wouldn't not. Listen, why I'm wouldn't just us? coming out here telling you what I got to do. You're not doing nothing to us, so. Yeah. Well, we had a great conversation on constitutional rights, Second Amendment, First Amendment. And, you know, it's just... Every American, and, and, and the problem with you saying that you're just doing your job, just so you know, is the problem with you saying I'm just doing my job is that that's a slippery slope that can lead to, hey, I'm just doing my job. Like if, if your boss ordered you to take the gun of somebody, right, your law enforcement, he says, I want you to go to this person's house and take their gun. He, that's your job, right? He told you to do it. He wrote a well, nice little fancy you, paper. you got to look at the context with that. What do you mean? Like why? Why is that person telling me to go take that gun? But you wouldn't just blindly follow orders, would you? No, it's got to be a lawful order. And you believe restricting someone's First Amendment right is a lawful order? I didn't say that. But you're following it, so you are saying that, though. How am I following it? Am I restricting anything you're doing? Well, no, you came out here and you read your paper. Yeah, it's not restricting you. You're still filming, right? Right. Fair enough. You're right, Lieutenant. Fair enough. So after you film this, where does it go? YouTube, so I, TikTok, Instagram. Every, all my social media outlets, I have a, a whole bunch of uh, social media outlets. My website, YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, everything. Like I said, it's just to spread awareness on constitutional rights, and then hopefully we can get into court and we can resolve it that way in a court of law. So that way, you know, if I lose, I lose. If I win, I win. So far, I got a, I got a good track record of winning. Okay, and if you win... It's a win for the people. Yeah, and, re and record in the publicly accessible areas, which is, doesn't pose a security risk to you, and it, it wouldn't hurt you at all. But what's the purpose? So you, it's, you, get people, you win, and there's people filming. Just like, what's the purpose of... It, 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 you could say, what's the purpose of anything in life, but it's, 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 it's the principle. It's being able to exercise your rights in public peacefully. I'm sure people want to exercise different types of rights than film in a prison. I'm sure, but... You know, it, it goes hand in hand with anything else that you're doing. You're filming in public. It's public. We should have the right to, to film anything in public. No, Fergie, do you want to film this? Or do you want to film that beautiful scenery? Well, you, we should be able to film both. We should be able to film both. We should be able to ask questions of our public servants. Say, hey, what do you what do you do here? Check up on our, our government officials. What, what's your day-to-day -day look like? You know, 
you do take tax dollars from us, right? So New York State and federal government, they take a lot of tax dollars from us. A lot of people take tax dollars. Right? Exactly. So they take a lot of tax dollars. They don't ask for it politely. They just take it, right? They just take it from your check. Every time you get a check, they take it. So I think with that comes the obligation to be transparent with the people, right? And say, hey... And say, hey, listen, this is what I do. This is how I earn my $150,000 salary. You know, maybe you deserve more. Maybe you deserve more. You don't make that much. I was just throwing out an example. There are officers that make, you know, police officers, especially where I'm from in Suffolk County, make $300,000, $400,000 a year. And it's it's kind of hard to, it's kind of hard to justify. Crime rate's not that high over there, so it's kind of hard to justify overtime. Or, for example. They have high crime rates in Suffolk County. Not compared to. Yeah. Dance, all that. yeah, those areas are particularly bad, yeah. Belport. But overall, Bellport, right? The, the bad part of Bellport. Yeah. Right. You have the Bellport Village, which is the good part, million-dollar homes. Yep. <laughs> it's crazy how that works, right? You have million-dollar homes next to, like, what but looks like... Again, how much, what type of price you going to put on an officer's life that could be shot the next right. day? Right. I mean, again, I'm not complaining necessarily with the salaries. I'm just saying... The whole accountability, you know, no one, law enforcement officers in general aren't held accountable for their actions. You know, even if they are, they resign, they go to a different department. That's what I was just speaking with to at the, the mayor of Cold Spring yes, last night. Um, an officer had three racked up $300,000 in lawsuits for violating people's rights. And then he resigns from the NYPD. And now he goes and he works for the village of Cold Spring. So that is not accountability. If, you know, if someone's breaking the law. They should be held accountable, just like anybody else. Is that really what's going on now in this country? No, but that's the problem. That is the problem. You're absolutely right. Okay, but that's the problem. If you break the law, you should be held accountable. And that goes for law enforcement officers, too. They should they should be held to a higher standard because they get a higher level of authority than a regular person does. You're absolutely right. That's all I'm asking for. Is like, let's, let's hold law enforcement officers accountable so that way I work with law enforcement departments. I help train them on First Amendment issues, on de-escalation issues. I've, I've worked with law enforcement officers, departments across the country. I've worked with them. We, I, they're on my channel. I'll, I'll send them to you if you'd like. So you can see I work with law enforcement. I'm not anti-law enforcement. I'm anti-bad law enforcement. And that's, and that's the real problem because, yeah, I would think, you would think that. But there's some people out there that are so blinded by back the blue ideology and they just think, oh, there are heroes. A hero is something, when you call a law enforcement officer a hero, is he really a hero? A hero is something that's earned. It's not, just because you decided to take a, a, a job doesn't make you a hero. Some, that's so something you earn, earn. by heroic Say actions. Does twenty years and really, by the grace of God, nothing happens. You don't have to make an arrest, save somebody's life. Not a hero. He's, why would he be a hero? Okay, why wouldn't he be? He is risking his life every day. Are, are you a hero? Am I a hero? We're not heroes. So just because we have a different job, doesn't mean that we should just automatically become a hero. When we put people on pedestals, everybody in their job is a hero if they do a good job. That's what their, you think. I think, I think, I think hero, I think, I think the word hero, I think that if you do a good job in your private industry or you're, you're a good person, you're a good worker, you know, you've, you've, you've been loyal to your company, whatever you want to say. But a hero is something that you're putting somebody on a pedestal, right? A hero. When you're thinking about a hero. Well, yeah. Somebody that that actively protects human life. So then if he... uh, if he could, if he did, if he, if he did, if he did heroic acts, then he's a hero. But what my only point, the assumption that you're yeah. going with is the assumption that every police officer, law enforcement individual is the same. They're not. No, 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 no. They come in and they just want to do their eight hours right. at home. And then there's people that go above and beyond specialized teams. For sure. Specialized training. Yes, you in the city. Those guys go through a lot of rigorous training. For sure. So for me to call them heroes, I'm glad to call them heroes. Right, they're but the, you, you would you would agree that just because they're training doesn't make them heroes. No. They have to do no, their their, their they actions. Have to, do to go into situations where other people are running. Right, that would be a hero for sure, hero. for sure. I'm just saying you cannot put a blanket over all law enforcement and call them heroes because I've I've met plenty of I've traveled this whole entire country from Hawaii, California, Florida, New York, everywhere. And I've met many law enforcement officers, and a, and a lot of them take their oath to help uphold the United States Constitution seriously. So seriously that they've invited me and to try and bridge the gap between law enforcement. As you know, this country is super divided right now. Mm-hmm. It's very divided, especially 
very, very divided, especially when it comes to law enforcement and the public. So I'm trying to bring them together. I'm trying to say, hey, listen, let's get rid of the bad ones because the bad ones, let's get rid of the, the shame of if you commit something, you're if he does something wrong, I'm not saying, I'm just using an example, I'm not yeah. saying you specifically. If he does something wrong and he's a law enforcement officer and you see it, nine times out of ten, that person's not going to say anything because they're scared of retaliation. And this is what I hear from people who work inside the departments. They email me. And they tell me, hey, listen, I, I watch your videos. I love your content. I love what you're standing up for. I, I tried to tell my partner about you and I was shunned. And, you know, that kind of divide, even inside of law enforcement departments, is what's tearing this country apart. We need to come together and get behind. Hey, listen, this man violated somebody's rights. This man is a bad law enforcement officer. He needs to be fired. A lot of the times they don't even get fired. They get a, um, you know, a smack on the wrist and, and call it a day. And that's a problem. That's a problem. There needs to be accountability because why Why am I held accountable? Because it's it's not only sends a deterrent to me to do it again, but it also sends a deterrent to the public when they see me held accountable. They say, okay, Sean was held accountable for doing this. If I do that, that's going to happen to me. If, if people see law enforcement officers being held accountable, then maybe they won't violate people's rights as much and they won't. I've seen a bunch of videos. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, oh, I'm not arguing with you that, I'm not arguing that they're here. Yeah, I'm not arguing with you that there's heroes. bad apples. Private industry, business, right? You know, made off. But of they're the held system. accountable. Dude, you got some. You got law. I mean, unless you kill somebody on national television, then maybe you're held accountable. And and again, I don't even think that that's the appropriate accountability in that sense. But again, I have my own personal views. But I've seen it. I go out there and I investigate these stories, and I've seen law enforcement officers that do things that are horrendous, horrendous, evil, evil, and they right. keep their jobs. And that is, and it happens all over this country. And you could say, you know, they're heroes, like law enforcement are heroes and stuff like that. And you could support law. I support law and order in they this country. What people say, they don't mean. Oh, they, they just they put the blanket term out there, but everybody knows that you have bad apples in everything, in right? Business, right? That's. So, I mean, that's just we're all people, and law enforcement officers are just get people. They can say, well, because they call law enforcement heroes, you know. No, it's just that it's I just don't thing. like, I know, I just don't think that, I think it, the reason why I think calling all law enforcement heroes is that it puts the wrong mentality into the brain. It's like, okay, they're heroes, that means they could do no wrong. Yeah, it's fine now. Just because if, you, if you, you're less likely to hold your hero accountable, right? You're less likely to say, hey, you know, because you're thinking of them as your hero. These people are thinking like, hey. It should be on an individual basis. Right. Hero, the word hero, the Held, held, held accountable, and I, I think sometimes it even goes over the board. I think sometimes, very rare case, uh, cases, where law enforcement officers are held accountable for the dumbest actions that they do because it's political, because you know it's it's a political a stunt, and they're held accountable because of politics, and that's not right either. It should just be across the board accountability and transparency in the government. Uh, I don't see how anybody can't get behind that. Nope, not my ride. Alright. He's coming with me? Yeah. Alright. Take care guys. Yep. See you later. We're gonna wait for law enforcement, see if they come. I doubt they're going to come. It's been a little while now, probably about thirty minutes. So we'll hang out. If they come, they come and we'll talk to them. If not, you know, they went inside. They went inside and left me outside by myself. Obviously, I'm not too big of a security threat for them. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have been waiting here for law enforcement for quite some time now. It doesn't look like they're coming. I don't think a man with a camera is on their top priority list, which is a good thing. We were able to peacefully exercise our First Amendment right. We had great conversation with the correctional officers inside. And that's all you can ask for, right? In such a divided country, we need to come together, have these conversations. We're not going to agree on everything, but we can have the conversations and hopefully that moves us forward as a country. Let me know what you think about this one in the comment section below. As always, stay safe. God bless. I'll see you in the next video. Long Island Audit. Peace.